What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and today we are hooking up our EGTs and bringing them back into the shadow dash so we have a quick easy way to data log so stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage and as always, I like to start these videos out by thanking all the new subscribers, all the people that comment and participate. If you have questions, comments, things like that, hit up the, the uh, comments box down below, join the tuning community and check out the websites. So we're just going to dive right into it today. I just beat my head over the wall of the last couple days of getting these EGT set up in the micro squirt. And that's because there's a couple of little funky things that we'll touch upon uh, as far as using custom uh, inputs and going through things like the I and I things because I started getting some errors because things weren't setting up. But then on top of it, getting it into the shadow dash, which this thing's pretty great once you figure it out. Uh, so I did hook up a Bluetooth unit. The, the problem with the micro squirt ones are they do not support voltage on pin nine of the serial. Should have thought of that, figuring it was using a stereo jack to get the two... Uh, transmit and receive wires back to your serial adapter. So don't spend money on the big expensive ones. They're about 50 or 60 bucks uh, to get the ones that support power on pin nine. The micro squirt does not support that. The mega squirts do though. So that's the way to go on those because then you can tuck it up. So for now, I've just got literally the 110 adapter plugged in in the truck using it to power the thing. The other side of it is your adapter has to be set up for a, whatever baud rate that your mega squirt is or it will not pull the information off of it and we're at 115K on this one. So once I got the adapter set up, all of that went through lickety split. And the cool thing about it is whenever you uh, connect up to Shadow Dash and it finds the device, it will load in all of the uh, definitions for the INI. But if you have a custom INI like we do on this one to set up things like custom gauges and custom inputs, you need to copy that over. We'll take a look at that whenever we dive into this real quick. But for now, let's jump under the engine bay, get the software opened up, and we'll take a look at everything that's going on. <laughs> Okay, I tried to keep this as simple as can be. So I've got a two channel uh, thermocouple to analog unit sitting underneath the micro squirt. And just literally, if you come over here and look, I've got a thermocouple on cylinder three. Come on, focus in. Well, it's being a pain in the butt, but there's one on cylinder three, then over here, way back in the back, we've got one on cylinder eight. So the things to be aware of specifically since we're dealing with the micro squirt is there's not channels set up for EGTs on this like there is on the mega squirt V3, things like that. So we have to go in and do custom channels. Now there's the hard way, which is doing the custom I and I. We're not gonna to touch on that. We're gonna talk about the easy way, but there's some issues going through the easy way that I found the hard way out that might help some of you out if you ever use this in the future. So the hard way doing the custom I and I, uh, there's plenty of, uh, uh, tutorials and stuff like that out on the internet. We're using uh, the pro version, the $100 version of Tuner Studio that gives us the config. And I've touched on it beforehand whenever we were doing things like the fuel pressure. We'll see if this thing goes ahead and connects up by itself. Sometimes whenever you're using the Bluetooth, you have to go into your settings and do detect and it will find your devices as it pulls every device that could be a comm device out there. Okay, there we found our device. We'll go ahead and accept out we're gonna connect up and take a look at it. And as you can see in the lower right hand corner, I've got my two EGT gauges. Everything's good, one's read 98, the other one's read 104.5. I ran this thing, oh, an hour and a half ago or so. So the big thing about this, as I said, we have to do custom inputs on here. So we need to figure out which inputs that we have available. If we go into the documentation, this is all of the pinouts for the micro squirt. And 
There's a couple spares in here, and in fact, we're using one of these spares, which is the ADC-2 for the MAF. One of the big issues with, with this is it's not labeled as ADC-2. It's labeled as ADC-7. ADC-6 is the spare ADC that's down here on number 29. That's the first one that shows up. This is the one that we're using for fuel pressure is ADC-1. Uh, so ADC-2 if we were to go back up and look at Tuner Studio and go into our custom channel editor where we've already added these, we are using ADC7. So that is analog digital conversion seven. And if you drop this list down, you'll see that uh, ADC6 and seven are the first ones that come in because of the uh, file that is loaded, the firmware that's loaded in this micro squirt, that's where it starts at. Keep that in mind. If we go back and look though, we need to find other inputs. And we have plenty of inputs in here, but we need to know which ones we can work with. Now the cam tack in input is gonna be a hall sensor or a pulse input. That's not gonna work for us. The flex, which is actually, I think flex might, oh, flex we're using for flex fuel, <laughs> duh. Uh, the flex is also a flexible input that can be used for other things besides that, but that is the one that we're using for our flex fuel content. You'll see that we actually have that down here in the lower hand. Uh, we've got 23% flex fuel in here, and so we're correcting our fuel table by 114%. We're adding 14% fuel for the 23. Pretty cool. Uh, VR2, same ordeal. Uh, let's see here. Bootload, that is to enable the bootloader. We can't use that, obviously. Now we get into some interesting stuff. Well, obviously, we already have a map sensor on this setup because that's what we're basing our VE tables off of, manifold pressure. Coolant temp, that is an input. I tried this out not thinking about the fact that coolant temps are going to be a resistive input, so there's going to be bias voltage on that. Uh, so there's already like four volts on there to uh, charge up the sensor, normally if you had like a two-wire sensor or something, to get the resistance from your coolant temp. And that's going to be the same thing for the manifold air temp. So those did not work after I finally figured that out. Unfortunately, we can't go in and change the type of input on these. We can use them as custom. We can set them up as custom temperature inputs. We can't use them as analog. But we do have the throttle position sensor, which is a voltage one to five, zero to five, something like that. So we were able to go in and use the TPS, since we're not using it for this setup, as our secondary sensor on there. Same ordeal, we've got the uh, 29. I'm trying to remember what I have 29 hooked up to. Maybe that's the fuel pressure. Yeah, 29 is the fuel pressure. Flex is the flex fuel. And then finally we have O2, which is our O2 sensor. For some reason I couldn't get this one to work right. I didn't dig that deep into it because I got them to work on ADC7 and TPS. But as we go back in and look, you can see we've got 10 bit. We're using 10 bit resolution on both of these. Zero is 32 degrees. I messed up originally, I had zero, zero degrees. That's zero degrees in Celsius, which is 32 in Fahrenheit. That's what was causing it to read off the other day on the live stream. Got that sorted out. And then five volts is 2282, which is the five volt for our controller. Even though our thermocouples are only good for 2100 or something or 2000, doesn't matter. The way that the thermocouples read into the uh, EGT controller is going to span that to where 2282 is our five volt out. Uh, same for both of these, but as you can see, one is TBS and the other one is going to be the ADC7. Uh, gauge template, pretty straightforward. You set that up whenever you go through the custom channel editor and put everything that you want in there. And right now I've got set for 1500 and 1700. Runs a little bit hot early on, but then it fell down to around 1200 at idle. We'll just kind of see where that goes and uh, log it from there. So the cool thing about it, as I said, now we've got a custom INI in here and it has created this custom INI for us. If we scroll down and look at it, we have got the information that has been put into our uh, unit whenever it loads up to build our dashes and stuff. And so you can see that we're in Fahrenheit and PSI and, and down here we have our custom channels or our channel name and it has the math to create the channels and things like that. So what does this mean? Well. And here's the cool thing. Here's the actual original channel name on there. Uh, it's a little bit weird that you can't necessarily come in here and see the full default channel name, uh, but I'm guessing if you were to open up something like maybe main controller, this probably goes through and would show you what all the default channel names, even to the point where you could probably edit this one and change a lot of those channel names to where they look a little bit better. But messing with that, you might mess something up, so be careful. But this custom INI folder, 
we are INI file. We are going to need that because on our shadow dash, without that, the EG2 bank one and bank two sensors and the fuel pressure sensors don't show up correctly. In fact, I talked about that on the live stream the other day. The fuel pressure, I couldn't get a decimal in there for some reason. Well, that's because I was using kind of the raw value that was being brought in on the sensor that it was referencing instead of having the custom one that I built. So what you can do is just plug your tablet in or get the SD card out of it and there will be a folder in there called Tuner Studio Projects that will mimic this and then you can find the Project Config folder and custom INI from the one that is on your laptop, copy it over to the one on your tablet. Whenever you open your tablet up, you now have the custom parameters that you can bring up the gauge for and see that. And effectively what we have then done is we have created a loadout that looks almost exactly like this, but on the tablet, so we can stream data, uh, data log directly on the tablet. And the cool thing about it is, is whenever we stop the data log, it'll automatically upload it to Dropbox so we can bring it into the actual software if we need to make adjustments. Now, issues that I had with the setup on this, uh, the big one is, is whenever I would make some changes, sometimes I would have to close this out and reload it to get that custom INI file to update because it would update it in the background, but it wouldn't necessarily change our gauges. On top of it, I brought the gauges in and put them under sensor input one. Sometimes you just have to go in here and select off onto a different gauge and then come back in and then select your existing gauge to get it to update something like your hash marks, things like that. How about we go ahead and fire this thing up and watch our EGTs take off like mad. So we're offline right now because the micro squirt shut off whenever we turn the truck on. It should pick back up here in a second. Everything's looking good there. Okay, now I've got our tablet out. We're going to go ahead and pull it up, get it connected. We're recording right now. It takes a little bit to find it, but there it found it. Now it's loading in our configurations. Let's go ahead and turn this thing sideways. And boom, we're connected. So now we have all of our pertinent data on here, EGTs, fuel pressure, boost level, pulse width modulation for both banks, engine speed, engine map. Super cool. We can come in here, swipe down, and if we go into do, 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 start logging, now we've got a data log running in the background. You can see it shows up in the bottom. Data logging is active, GPS is active. We can swap through different menus here, see what kind of dashes we've got going on. And then we've got kind of the performance dash that shows things like acceleration, etc. Now that we've got some data, hit the stop logging button and it says I don't have Dropbox access right now, I'll try again later. But we do now have a data log file saved on here. We can go in here and see our latest one with today's date. And you can tell that the one's already been uploaded and the next one is, is queued up. So pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. <laughs> okay, hopefully you were able to actually hear me whenever the thing was running. Uh, as I said, it's pretty neat. I'm enjoying the Shadow Dash stuff. Now, a little disclosure here. We're going to try something interesting, something that I swore I've never, I was never going to do. I've broken down and I've done it. I have paid for the Pro Feature Set on HP Tuners, and it's not for the analog ends. It is because it has a CAN bus connector on there, and our Micro Squirt has a CAN bus out with Dash Broadcast that, that will broadcast general parameters that Theoretically, we should be able to hook that in and bring it in as parameters on HP tuners to log things off of the micro squirt through our scanner. So we're going to do a video on that very soon. Uh, we are 99% there. I've gotten my catch can and stuff kind of mounted and out of the way. Uh, got the plate installed, waiting for the jets. They should be here Wednesday or Thursday of this week. So we'll have the jets to hook up our methanol uh, injection on this stuff. We'll go through getting everything set up, getting the tune started, and diving into this beast of a truck. It's going to be very interesting to see, and I'm super excited to have the opportunity to log these EGTs and see how they respond to things like methanol injection, uh, running the secondary injection, 
you know, and we've got about 20% E85 in there now. I'm also going to be interested to see once we get a basically a full tank of E85 in there, what kind of effect that has on things like EGTs. Because the big thing on this, the thing that's going to end up killing this motor is going to be cylinder temperature somewhere down the long run. I'm pretty darn sure of it. So we're doing everything we can to keep those down. So got any questions, comments, things like that, hit up the comment section down below. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't for some reason. Uh, thanks for stopping by the garage and you know the drill, ABT, always be tuning.